Hey everybody, welcome back to Harmon Garage. I'm Aaron. Uh, as you may notice, Hot Shot is not in the shop anymore. No, we didn't send it back. We're still going to do what we're going to do to it, but another project popped up and uh, I think I can get it done pretty quick, so we're just going to throw it in here in the middle of the mix. But if you watched a couple videos back when I went on my little adventure to get the motor for rum runner i said i had to stop and work on a truck for a buddy and i put some pictures in the video of this truck this is the truck that i went over and uh, got running right for him and he brought over another truck also which i'm about to take you outside and show you but um it's a flip so he bought this truck for fourteen hundred dollars he bought the truck out there for fifteen hundred dollars so he's got twenty nine hundred dollars in both trucks so far and this truck only has like seventy thousand original miles on it and ran and drove fantastic but the body's beat on it it's pretty rough interior is pretty rough so what we're gonna do is take the motor and trans out of this truck and all the best parts off of this truck and put them in the other truck I'm about to show you and see what kind of budget we can do it on and flip it and see how much money we can make off of it so I'm gonna try to keep my labor and expenses under a thousand because we don't want to be in this truck over four thousand dollars guys get your umbrellas out or something i'm going to try to cover you here it's raining out here i don't want you getting all wet but anyways we're going to try to keep what's in the project around four thousand dollars and then see if we can make any money off of it so this is the truck that we're flipping it's an 80 Judging by the front, it's either an 81 or an 82. I'm not sure exactly what year it is. I can look in a minute, but it's an 81, 82, short bed, standard cab. It's seats in good shape, door panels can clean up decent. It was a uh, it was actually a weird option truck because it had an inline six with power steering and AC, which is, I mean, you can find them, but it's not super common. And uh, whoever bought it probably didn't enjoy driving it because by the time you get power steering and air conditioning on an inline six, they don't go very well. They don't go anywhere very fast, but it's a decent looking truck. For some reason, I got one brought over with these wheels again that I can't stand. But, uh, it's not a bad looking truck. We've already formulated a plan for it. How far we're going to go, what we're going to do. But we're going to take all the best parts that we can off of that truck inside. Put them on this truck out here. I'm gonna film it all for you guys all along the way and we're gonna see how much it cost us to get the truck ready to sell and then we're gonna see how much we can make off of it so this is gonna be project flip and uh, we're gonna see what, what we can do with it so for right now I came over this morning he brought the truck over I got everything stripped off of the motor that I need to strip off to pull it. I've got my motor mount bolts off. So the only thing I have left to do is go underneath and drop the transmission cross member mount, the exhaust, and take the drive shaft out. And I should be able to hook a cherry picker up to it and drag it out. So I'm going to go ahead and finish getting the motor and tranny out of this truck. And uh, then I'll bring you guys back and tell you what the next step's going to be. 
99% sure I got everything unhooked except for maybe a couple wires or something that I missed to uh, get this motor out and it should be ready. All I should have to do is pick up on it and I might have to tap the exhaust off because it's still sitting on the collars. And I'll probably have to crawl underneath and get the transmission up out of the cross member. But other than that, everything should be off and she should be ready to come out. And I got one motor mount bolt over here that's still kind of halfway in there, but I'm pretty sure I take a little bit of weight off of it and it'll be fine. you saw in the video or saw just before this I uh, got the motor and trans out with uh, very little snags there's a couple wires that didn't want to work out with me but we got them and uh, trying to think other than that there wasn't really any problems so we've got a 350 with a turbo 350 trans and it looks like your typical 70,000 mile small block. Plenty of dirt, mouse poop built up on it. Valve covers have been leaking since for 70,000 miles. Timing covers leaking. Oil pans leaking. Nice thing about them leaking and being covered in oil is they clean up really easy. Hose them down real good, clean them up, scuff them up. So. That's what we're gonna do. This motor runs fantastic. This truck sat quite a bit. So uh, we're going to clean it up real good, put new seals in it, paint it. I mean, this thing didn't smoke or nothing. I have no questions about it being a good motor. And it drove in here. So we already know at that point that we're doing all right. Transmission fluid was bright red, looked great. I'm probably going to put a pan gasket on the transmission too because even though I tried to prevent it, I dumped about six quarts of transmission fluid on the floor under the truck out the tail shaft. So what can you do? Once you get it up in the air and it starts leaking, you just kind of stand there and laugh and let it go and clean it up when you're done. But that's going to be the next step. I'm going to take the transmission off of the engine and uh, get this thing on an engine stand. And... Uh, get it cleaned up and all that stuff and we'll get the truck cleaned up and we'll get stuff switched out and you'll get to see everything we're doing i don't want to give it all away right now but motors out of the donor truck transmission also and uh gonna start getting ready to flip that truck so stay tuned all right motor and trans is out of the truck I, uh, not gonna say I cleaned up my mess because the shop is still destroyed, but I picked up all my tools and put them away, so I give myself props for that. I uh, pulled some other parts off of this, took the windshield out, took the cowl panel off, uh, took the trim off. This is just gonna be a parts truck, so I took some of those parts because we're gonna use them on, uh, Hot Shot. And, uh, I need to roll this outside so that I can bring Hot Shot back in and work on it while we're working on this cleaning up this motor and all that stuff to get flip truck ready to bring in. But I know this thunderstorm's coming through. So I've got other stuff I can do. I really don't feel like going out getting wet and working the rest of the day soaked. So some people would say it's raining cats and dogs, but 
The only cats and dogs I've seen have been running for cover trying to get out of the rain, so I don't know what they're talking about. But next thing I'm gonna do, unhook the transmission from the motor. We're gonna get the motor up on the engine stand. And uh, it looks like it's about ready to paint, right? I can just go ahead and grab some color and shoot it right on there. We'll start cleaning it up. So that's what I'm gonna do now. We'll uh, get that all switched over and um, then we'll start cleaning. All right, first thing I'm gonna do is pull this transmission off. It's always the one that's got to be difficult. So we got that off. Now I'm going to uh, pick the motor up on the cherry picker and then I'll bring the engine stand over here and we'll get it put up on the engine stand. cherry picker off the motor. No, I'm not going to do that. I was going to go ahead and use the cherry picker to lift the intake off, but I want to do some other stuff first, so we're going to go ahead and get the cherry picker out of the way. things I wanted to do first was drain all the fluids but it looks like it's doing it for me. I don't think there's a gasket on this motor that ain't leaking. So I'm just going to go ahead and drain the oil. I'm going to take the coolant plugs out of the block, let it all drain down. What hasn't already drained all over the floor.
They had some sort of gasket on there that came apart. Alright, I'm going to take these plugs out of the side of the block here. I'm not going to take them all the way out yet because I'm using the same bucket, but I just want to make sure that they come loose. That one, dude. And this one has some kind of temp sensor or something in it. So. This has probably got to be one of the most disgusting motors I've pulled in a long time. It looks like it's mainly valve cover leak, but. Uh, with only 70,000 miles on this sucker, I'd say they've been leaking since it was new. Alright, I went ahead and pulled the oil drain plug. And if you guys don't know it, on small block Chevys and big blocks too, I believe, on both sides of the block right here above the oil pan, there's a plug in there. Those go in, that's the lowest point of the coolant jackets. And you take those plugs out and you can drain 99.9% .9 of the coolant out of the block. I always try to do that if I can, sometimes you can't get them to come out, but if I can get them to come out, I always try to do that. Because then when you got it on the engine stand and you go to roll the motor over, you don't get all the coolant dumping all over the place, which I already dumped coolant all over the place, so it doesn't really matter, but I'd like to try not to dump more. So we drain that out. Probably got about two, two and a half gallons out of the block. So that'd have been two, two and a half gallons more that was on the floor that we don't want. So why I'm letting those drain completely I cleaned off the back of the block right here to find my block casting number which for those of you that don't know it's on the back of the block right behind the intake and it's this number right here on top this one's a 14010201 I don't know what motor this is um, the sticker in the truck is gone so I'm gonna run my casting number and find out I'm not familiar with that number so with that i'm assuming it's going to be a 305 but i'm going to go on the old uh phone that's smarter than me here and find out what that casting number is and then i'll let you guys know okay so i went on a search engine and just typed in sbc uh casting numbers popped up with this website scroll down through it 1401 0201 right there is a 305 from 80 to 85 so doesn't really make any difference whether it's a 305 350 you know whatever it don't matter to me but uh i just curious to know what it was so we're gonna let it drain out and uh, start disassembling it and I'm going to pull some parts off of it and talk to you guys why I do it. And then I'm going to go over exactly what we're going to do to this truck. So hang in there and uh, we'll keep going. All right. So while that's finishing draining, I'm going to go ahead and start at the top, work my way down, start pulling parts off. Sorry guys. This thing is nasty. 
just about anything that you could expect to find on a motor is sitting on this one. It's going to be fun cleaning this one up. It's going to take a little while to get her done. Alright. Now I'm going to fire up the world's most useless shop back here. And, uh, well, first of all, I got all the bolts out of the intake. So now I'm going to fire up the shop vac and just get as much of the loose stuff that I made and was already there and whatnot off of this before I pull the valve covers off. <laughs> Okay, once again, world's most useful shop vac. Alright. I can probably get the intake off with the valve covers on, but sometimes they're tucked underneath the lip, so I'm going to go ahead and pull the valve covers off first, and then we'll pop that intake. I had a bolt break off on me trying to get the intake bolts out and it was the one here right next to the EGR which if you ever have any issues getting a bolt out that's going to be the one that gives you issues but uh, it broke the head off I'm thinking I can still get the intake off around it it's just really stuck on there not to mention it's an old cast iron intake so it probably weighs 150 pounds. Alright, now my video will come off. Yay, there we go. Alright. The only other thing I'm really going to pull off today is the exhaust manifolds. So, uh, we'll get that, get those ripped off real quick and then we'll start going over what we're going to do with this thing. Alright, well, I got the motor tore down as far as I'm going to go with it today. I stripped down everything except for 
the oil pan and the timing cover and that's because I want to let it sit and drip overnight she's still dripping a little bit so just let it sit and drip and get everything that wants to come out of it out of it uh, this motor is a little bit dirty on the inside for 70,000 miles but not too bad probably didn't get oil changes when it needed it or something but I'll clean it all up flush out all the oil passages and put a new oil pump on it and it'll be good to go we'll see when I pull the um, when I pull the pan off I'll pull a rod cap and a main cap like I usually do and look at the bearings see what they look like and decide where we want to go from there but once again this is a budget deal we're trying to see what kind of money we can make in a flip without spending a ton of money without a lot of work so um, that's the idea this series of videos on this truck i'm going to go through and i ain't going to hide nothing from y'all i'm going to tell you everything i did every dollar i spent everything so that way you'll know hey if i want to go buy two trucks to make one awesome truck how can i do it and what's it going to cost me so that's what i'm doing right now i've got two hours i've got two hours in pulling the motor and transmission out of the truck and i've got about another hour on the motor so far so like i've said before i charge a hundred or but i charge fifty dollars an hour so three hours that's 150 bucks so we're gonna write that down keep track of it like i said we want to try to keep all my parts and labor under a thousand dollars so we'll see how it goes um if it costs a little more then i'll tell you guys it costs a little bit more but right now all we're gonna have to buy for the motor that i know of is an oil pump and a gasket set and it doesn't need an oil pump you know when we fired it up had it running drove it around everything else it had 50 pounds oil pressure on cold start with the oil that was in it which i found out today when i drained it it had quite a bit of fuel in it so it was broken down and after it warmed up it never got under 30 35 at an idle and as soon as you hit the accelerator it came back up so the oil pump is good and i may not change it because now that i'm sitting here thinking about it telling you guys how good it is might not need it i normally change them just because i got it all apart but probably don't need it Seventy thousand miles and uh sorry seventy thousand miles and runs good has good oil pressure i don't think it even needs one so but that's about it i mean i not a whole lot in this video other than explaining what we have going on this was just a donor truck parts truck we're gonna take obviously we already took the motor and trans and anything on this truck that is better then that same part on the other truck we're going to take off of this one and put on that one so this has actual mechanic it's got a clock but it has a mechanical uh it actually has a gauge for the oil pressure and the temperature and the other truck has dummy lights so i'm going to take this harness off of this this engine harness off this truck I'm going to take that cluster off this truck so that 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 truck will actually have gauges uh, I'm going to take this bezel it's the other trucks a custom deluxe so it doesn't have any of the fancy stuff on it so I'm probably going to change over the bezel and the band on the side of the dash um, that truck i think i already showed you guys earlier in the video it's got those aluminum wheels that i totally despise on it so this has rallies we're gonna clean up paint those rallies put them on there um just anything on this truck that's in better condition than the part on that truck is going to get switched 
we're gonna go through and do the full I call it the dirty treatment but like we did to this truck where we clean up and paint everything like we did on dirty if you're new you don't know what dirty is but go back a little ways in my videos and you'll find dirty that's another short bed c10 that i did but um we're gonna clean up paint the whole engine compartment we're gonna redo the whole wiring harness we're gonna get the motor make sure the motor is 100 percent good i'm not going to put a motor in something that's going to go to somebody and cause them any problems i'm going to make sure it's something that i would put in something for myself with the expectations of driving it all day every day so we'll make sure that motor's good i'll clean it up as good as i can we'll paint it we're going to do a couple things to it that i can show you guys how to do where you can save money but make it better and uh the truck it's been spray painted black it looks like but the body's really straight so haven't quite decided what we're going to do there yet we might just you know wet sand the black spray paint and make it even and nice uh there's a couple dents in the roof i'm going to probably fix and we're going to put a white cap on the roof um yeah but other than that a lot of stuff we're gonna do i don't want to give it all away now because then you guys won't watch the video to see it happen so this truck's gonna be cool i'm gonna outline every dollar that i spend and show you everything that i do to take a basically barn find or junkyard truck and make it worth some money so if you're not subscribed hit the subscribe button if you are subscribed share it with your friends leave me a comment tell me what you think Hit the bell so you get notifications, all that good stuff. I appreciate y'all. If it wasn't for you, there wouldn't be me. So y'all have a good one, and we'll see you next time.